Hello, Steven Spring here, back with another video. Today I'm going to be doing a tool bag tour uh, and showing you guys what I use daily, what I carry inside with me. And then later on in another video, I'll show you what I keep in my truck and what I decided not to carry with me when I go inside. So I think that's going to be an interesting video. Also, I just moved into a new place. This is my office, and so this is where I'll be shooting videos. So if you guys wouldn't mind giving me feedback on lighting and sound, I just use a little shotgun mic right now, and I just have two, uh, two LED light bulbs pointed my way. So I know there's going to need to be improvements on that, but hopefully uh, with your guys' help, I can, uh, I can get that honed in. So yeah, I'm just gonna show you um, the tools that I carry with me. Um, and when I go inside for uh, to clients, uh, well, what's easy to carry in, it's just a, you know, a tool bag and what I decide to leave in the truck because you, know, you don't always need to be adding extra bulk to your tool bag. So uh, the, I probably have a lot more uh, tools than I actually use, but you know, I like to have them on me. I don't like taking multiple trips. So anyway, I'll see you guys uh, down up close where I'll show you my tools. All right, so here's an up close of my tool bag. Uh, so I didn't put up my uh, laptop bag, but I do carry a laptop backpack with me. And I keep a few uh, few things that I think at least for me, are necessary to have. Since I work for a small company and we, you know, do we do go out of our scope a little bit um, in regards to what we do for our clients. I do keep a little electronic toolkit. So first thing I keep is electronic toolkit. Uh, to just help me get into any type of computer, any type of device uh, that I need to. You know, you never know. So I keep electronics toolkit first uh, for me something I keep on me and carry in anywhere I go is a Raspberry Pi this Raspberry Pi is preloaded it's preloaded with um, a Unify controller we use a lot of ubiquity uh, equipment uh, and uh, do a lot of uh, ubiquity access points uh, in our build outs so uh, in the event of a of a ubiquity uh, controller failure i have this so i can temporarily get them back online with the controller uh, while i order them a new unified controller so i do keep this with me um, for my commercial clients uh, it's come in handy a couple times so i keep that with me next thing uh, one of the most important things is you never go to a long job without a nice set of headphones. In this case, these are some Samsung True Wirelesses uh, that I carry with me um, pretty much everywhere I go. I keep them in my ears almost all the time. And uh, it cuts down on unnecessary chatter as well as, you know, keeps you entertained while you're, while you're working. Next uh, is another very important tool. This is uh, an Asus Transformer. Uh, this one has a, uh, a Linux distro on it, Ubuntu. Uh, I use this for any type of networking on the go I need to. Uh, it's not super powerful, but um, in my position, you know, I'm not doing any editing or anything. Most of the time, I'm just accessing web UIs or or something like Winbox for um, to to play around with the like Microtik routers or UNMS, um, which is a uh, kind of a air controller for for ubiquity so it doesn't need to be very powerful um, but it is very versatile so um, you know it transforms fully and uh yep just a just a lightweight uh linux distro is all i need on here it's easy to deal with it's easy to, to ssh right into things uh to work on equipment and uh, what more can i say uh, it's perfect and very necessary So I guess I'll just start from the outside uh, and work my way in. These are pliers. Specifically, these are uh, pliers used for 
um, for phone mostly. Um, they're actually just uh, like a set of utility phone pliers uh, by Jonard uh, for uh, this little space here is for for crimps. It can cut out. It can it can uh, um, pull back wire and. Uh, by the way, I'm one taking this, so if my terminology's off, it's just because I can't think of it, but I'm not gonna reshoot. So anyway, these are uh, Joan Howard pliers. These are a set of crimpers, probably one of my most used um, pieces on here. Um, they'll crimp RJ45 as well as RJ11, and also they'll strip. So that's uh, super good. Um, Klein tools, it's probably the best out there they last a long time sometimes these crimpers you know these these little slots down in here can bend and stuff and so i always go good on crimpers uh don't ever cheap out at least in my opinion so this is a nine in one milwaukee screwdriver uh, it's just got different common uh it's really an electrician's uh screwdriver it's got a lot of common uh, things you might need um, pulls out goes to the other side and uh, so yeah it's a nine in one most common things that I would need to get into I can just use use this and be good right here's just a little box cutter I actually use this thing more than uh, more than not getting into either most of the time when shipments come in just so I can cut open boxes or whatever but you never know when you need a utility knife so anyway t25 stapler so that you can keep your, your wires nice and up out of the way, staple them to the wall or staple them to an exterior of the building or, or whatever. Just gonna, different types of electrical tape. And uh, so yeah, there's that. All right. Milwaukee ink saw. You know, you never know when you need a mark on devices or, or mark on a sheet of paper or a sticky uh, to throw on some cabling to identify it. Uh, it's just good to have. Multi-tool. Always keep a multi-tool to see if uh, devices are damaged or, or passing voltage. So it's just always good to have on you. A no contact electrical tester. Uh, I keep this on me all the time. You know, it's good to just quickly check to see if something's uh, got power running through it or not. So I always keep one of these on me. And a line tester. Uh, this one will do uh, phone, coax, and ethernet. Uh, though I, I rarely use phone or coax, I mostly use ethernet. This will also tell you if the cable shielded properly, um, if you're going to be passing voltage through it. Um, so this is the other end. This is just the uh, the other side of the tester. And so you would put this on one side of the cable and then this on the other side of the cable. And it will tell you uh, if each pin is uh, registering. So you know if, if uh, all your pins are working. And so you know if you have a good or bad cable, essentially. Uh, but it's not a cable verifier, it's just a tester, so. And here, I'm not gonna get too into what's in here. This is just various stuff for the multimeter. Um, I keep a couple other things, but mostly stuff for multimeter. And then just, you know, little, little parts down at the bottom. Um, Things like that. Uh, it's kind of just just to put like the stuff that doesn't really go anywhere. So uh, 
So I always keep a nice pair of gloves. I don't really pull them out too much, but you know, it's always good to have a, a nice pair of gloves. These ones have a smart swipe in them, which I won't own a glove that doesn't have smart, uh, smart swipe. I hate having to take off my gloves every time I need to use my phone or something. And to be honest, uh, with the evolution of smartphones, you know, I hardly ever even need my laptop anymore. I can do most everything on a smartphone. So it's important that my gloves uh, can uh, use a smartphone while they're on. This is just a little Milwaukee, um, a Milwaukee tape measure. It's a 25 foot. I don't need much more than that. So it just clips to the end of this bag. Um, this is another, uh, this is just a real cheap stud finder. I, I don't really like using stud finders. Every once in a while you need them. You can't tell you get a, a weird wall, but I like using the knocking technique, you know, um, you, you can hear where, where the studs are and that's the way I prefer to do it. But I do keep one on me uh, just in case. Just some scissors, um, you know, it'll strip back wire, it'll cut, you know, just little network, uh, network scissors. These are good for, uh, for stripping wire. Um, don't use them too often, but they are good for it. So keep them on me. If I'm ever going to strip a bunch of wire, I'll just use these. It's a little bit easier. and open go through here go ahead and pull this strap off little impact i keep i just bring it in with me you know you never know when you're going to need to pull a server out of a rack or or something like that and uh you know i don't want to hand crank every single every single screw on and off so i keep this uh in here you know use it sometimes <clears throat> I use this uh, long flathead um, just to, to scrape at things, um, get back into places, you know, back far, clean stuff out or, or whatever I need to poke and prod. Uh, nothing specific. It's just, you know, sometimes I need it and uh, you can tell because the end, you know, it's got all kinds of gunk on it. So you just never know. A uh, good old level, self-explanatory, nice Klein Tools level, uh, like a good level. Um, you know, in theory, bubbles are bubbles and you, know, you can't go too wrong with it, but uh, I definitely, you know, prefer, prefer carrying this for whatever reason, so. Punch down tool, uh, it's got both 66 and 110. I, you know, I, I don't use, uh, 66, just 110. So, um, just a standard kind of a cheapo punch down tool. Some good old dikes. You know, you always need to have, uh, have a good set of dikes. You never know what you need to cut, you know, from from zip ties that somebody went crazy with to, um, you know, just anything. Anybody that's in this business knows that a good pair of dikes is is necessary. Nice little adjustable, you know, alternative to an adjustable wrench. Does the same thing. But um, to me, this is a little bit easier uh, to do to deal with, and uh, so I always keep one of these on me. Uh, I keep this sheathed, but um, it's uh, I mean, it's all you know, pulling out the sheathing, but uh, good drywall saw. So for uh, you know, in case you're gonna you know put a wire down down some uh drywall and uh you know you gotta you gotta cut out a hole so you can fish the wire down and pull it out the other side and and put a plate over it and and uh so this is just a little 
um, accessories kit that I keep with my impact. It's got all, you know, Phillips, Flathead, Star, you know, anything you might need um, to, to put on the end of, of the drill to, to uh, access or unscrew anything you need to. I use uh, these um, just cheap little conduit cutters. Um, I cut a little little piece of PVC. I don't actually use these much, but for a while I was doing broadband. So um, when I would uh, when I was installing demarcation points, I would use these to uh, cut down the conduit, um, the pre-installed conduit. So. This will get you through the wall, a piece of drywall, piece of, you know, wood so that you can get a, a uh, you know, standard side Ethernet cable through the, uh, through the wall. I can't, I can't think of the, uh, the uh, size uh, right off the top of my head, but, uh, but yeah, just enough to get an Ethernet uh, through, uh, through the wall, so. Adjustable wrench. I do keep an adjustable wrench, even though I showed you the other one I use most of the time. Sometimes you need to, so I just keep a little adjustable wrench. Don't use it that often. Um, you now this is to pull off a uh, um, uh, coax terminate uh, termination uh, little caps, uh, and I am a little. So I'm a little. Uh, I'm a little hazy on, on my terminology and broadband. I haven't done it in a few years, so I don't actually know why I still keep some of this stuff in the bag, but, uh, you know, just can't seem to get rid of it. So coax strippers don't use them too often. Every once in a while I do. So, um, yeah. Coax crimpers. Um, this will do, uh, RG6, RG59, and then also it'll do the big boy RG11. So they're really nice to have. Uh, don't use them too often, but you never know. So um, but the company I work for does uh, does do some satellite uh, for um, for IPTV that they that they host. Um, so every once in a while, you need to pull these out and recrimp an RG11. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, so yeah. Other wire strippers don't use them too often. Never really need to, but keep them on there regardless. Use this as a little scraper. Just, uh, you know, you never know when it comes in handy. Uh, you just need that extra, extra centimeter. So you just scrape it off the wall or whatever. Um, so yeah, keep the scraper on me. Uh, this thing was cool when I was doing broadband. Like I said, I don't do broadband anymore, but every once in a while I still do deal with some, some coax. Uh, so... I keep this, this little slip wrench. I don't know if you guys can see, um, but it doesn't look like a normal wrench. That's because you don't have to pull the wrench off every time you go to screw it. It just, it just slips on there. So you just keep pulling it up and it'll just slip and pull, slip and pull. So it's also made by Jonard 7 sixteenths, just standard coax. See, I'm gonna tip the bag, see what else we got in here. Um, I'm not gonna pull them out, but I do got some zip ties back here. Um, butt set, man, I, I really don't use this too often. You know, we've moved to VOIP and uh, don't really deal with any legacy phone system or pots or anything like that anymore. I've maybe pulled them out once in the last year, maybe uh, actually twice in the last year um, when we were, um, just uh, 
converting a, a legacy system. So we, we were using some of the existing wiring. So I, I have used them, but I don't use it too often, but I keep it in the bag. This is just another set of the, the uh, strippers. Uh, this one's a little bit more banged up. I don't use it uh, as often. It's just in there as a backup. Uh, this is just like actually a little uh, a star tool. It's a uh, from a company called Diversified Control. It's how you get into the uh, PEDS for broadband. Don't use this at all anymore. I don't even know why it's in here. And the last thing I'll go over, um, if I can get it out. There we go. Just a little flashlight. It's a little magnetic flashlight, so it'll stick to anything magnetic. Uh, let me see if I can show you. So yeah, like in this case, now you stick it on the end of a server rack. And you click it on, it'll give you that extra light. So anyway. This other, uh, I don't actually use, uh, I don't actually normally keep in my bag, but this will cut things like chain link, um, things like that, cut back, uh, stuff like that. Uh, it's not typically in my bag. I just needed it uh, the other day, so it's in there. And so, yeah, that's about it. Uh, that's what I keep uh, in my uh, just initial carry in bag. It's about 90% of what I need, you know, um, there's other things that I don't really carry with me that I can go over later that, that you, we, uh, you know, that I might, might use later on, uh, or I might not use as often, but I'll need to pull off the truck. Things like, um, like fish tape. Um, to pull wire through conduit, uh, to fish wire through conduit or um, things like that. So I do have other tools that I keep on the truck. Um, it's just, it's not uh, not used very often. So uh, the other thing I will do is as I, if I know I'm going to need a, a specialty tool like the fish tape, I'll just carry that in with my bag. So if I need, if I know I need to use it, I'll carry it in. But when I'm going into a situation where I don't really know what's going on, those are the tools that I choose to carry with me. So let me know what you guys think of that. Uh, let me know what you guys think of what I, what I carry with me. Um, let me know if you think I should uh, carry, you know, a, a different tool that I don't have on there. Or um, if you think I should get rid of a certain tool, let me know what you guys think. What do you guys carry in your bag? I'm pretty curious, actually. So um, thanks again for watching the video, and uh, I appreciate it. If you guys wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, I'll be coming out with more content um, about twice a week. So, all right. Well, thank you so much.